even speak the same language. Maybe not all of us can understand or talk, speak English, but all of us can understand and convey the universal language of joy, sadness, and pain. I am a full-time poet and a part-time translator. Um, I'm currently in the midst of publishing my own poetry anthology with a Singaporean publisher, and I'm also translating short stories by Ali Akbar Navis, who is this Indonesian author. My interests in these two areas of literature actually tried, um, I, I'm, I actually tried to translate this poem that I wrote for our ex-governor Ahok, and it's really hard <laughs> because, well, you'll see why. I started getting really serious with poetry and translation when I went to Columbia University for a summer session and I met this Danish translator called Katrine Jensen. That same summer, I went to go visit colleges in the US and I met this American boy. We introduced ourselves to each other. And when I told him where I was from, he was like, Indonesia? What's that? <laughs> and I was surprised, but this experience actually made me realize that Indonesia isn't very well known in the world. And part of the reason behind this is because Indonesian literature does not have a prominent place. This is because we do not have enough translators. And in this context, I use the word translators loosely, not in the context of only Indonesian literature, but in the context of world literature today. Ladies and gentlemen, successful stories do get translated. One of my favorite stories as a child, Harry Potter, has been translated into 68 different languages, Bahasa Indonesian included. Despite English being the most spoken language in the world, translating foreign literature, or literature in general, opens the door to a more international audience. J.K. Rowling once said, no story lives unless someone wants to listen. And the majority of people who want to listen are not part of a monoculture, but are instead citizens of a diverse world. Literature is knowledge, and knowledge should not be limited to a single audience. But how else can we break the barrier of language if not through translation? When I tell people that I translate Indonesian literature, sometimes people are kind of judgmental. Like one time after AP Literature, um, we studied a text by Gabriel Garcia Marquez, which was a translated uh, short story. And my friend came up to me and she told me that all this while, she had perceived translation with a tinge of condescension. But this isn't the first time I've heard such a remark. See, a lot of people attribute the art of translation as purely a work of Google Translate, which is every foreign language student's best friend. And yeah, sometimes I do use Google Translate if I don't know how a word can translate nicely into English or if I want to find out a synonym of a word. But as a translator, I can't rely on a programmed machine to translate literature. This is why. In psychology, we learn about this thing called mirror neurons, which are these neurons in your head that fire whenever you observe something external. This is the reason why you might be afraid to go to the bathroom after watching The Ring, or why you feel very sad after, uh, after reading Romeo and Juliet. This is a scientific explanation of what's more commonly known as empathy. This is what people often forget. If you're reading a piece of literature, you're not just reading a scatter of words on a page. You are reading words that are associated with emotions. You are reading the words that the writer has curated effortlessly, or sometimes effortfully, by taking you on a journey with them. And this journey, aren't, it's not words. This journey is emotions, right? And the things you remember from literature is not, the, is not the, how the author describes Hogwarts. It's how Harry Potter met his friends. It's how Harry Potter defeated Voldemort. If that was a spoiler, I'm sorry. <laughs> and, yeah. Victor Sklowski once said, art is thinking in images. The purpose of imagery is to bring the significance of the image closer to our understanding. Without this, the image has no meaning. The reason why I will now say that we are all translators is because we all convey and understand information differently. 
So if you put, let's say, me and my Bahasa Indonesian teacher side by side to translate the Ahok poem that I wrote, our final products will be different. This is not to say that me or him are underqualified in the target language or even the original language. It's just the fact that you know my perception of my own poem versus his are definitely going to be different. Similarly, my perception of Hogwarts and Narnia will definitely differ from I don't know, let's say a widowed 40-year-old fireman living in Canada, even if we're both reading the prose in the same language. Our experiences shape the way we perceive art, as Sklovsky has implied. This is also the reason behind why there are multiple translations for famous translated, I mean, translated literature, such as Fyodor Dostoevsky's The Brothers Karamazov. There is the Claude Garnett translation, and there is the uh, Richard Pivier and Larissa Volochonsky translation. And it's not to say that both of these have no merit or are, you know, one of it is not qualified, because both of them are interpretations of the text. Translated pieces are independent texts. They're not, I mean, of course, they are interpretations of the original texts, but they stand alone as their own art. So what's next? I know not all of you are going to go out translating multiple prose and plays and poetry, but if you want to, please do so. You have my blessing and you have the world's blessing. But what can you do to be a translator here in JIS or even in Jakarta, where 50 plus languages are spoken every day? Ask yourself, what languages can you speak? What emotions or truths do you want to convey to others? And how can you make knowledge accessible to people who are hungry for it? Begin with a conversation about words. What words in a language that you can speak have made you understand something differently? What truths or concepts do you want to convey to others that a language that you, that you know have made you understand it better, but maybe in another language, it, the concept isn't as clear. Share your life and your experiences with others. Be the translator of thought, of emotions, of the knowledge you have acquired throughout all the years about being alive. We humans are drifting spirits trying to communicate the complexities and the intricacies of our thoughts and emotions, but communicating them to, to other people through the medium of words that other people can understand. Ladies and gentlemen, talking is sharing. Sharing is translating. And in this digital age, sharing is very, very easy. All we need is just more people to do it. Thank you.